Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stu and the crew. I'm Rebecca and today is Thursday, so we've got some new Dollar Tree DIY ideas for you. Let's go over our supplies first. Our first project, we're going to use these wall hooks. We're also going to be using these white wall hooks to put on the other pieces that we're going to use, a printout from the computer, some hot glue, scissors, pearls. We're also going to be using a pencil and a ruler. We'll need some antiquing wax and a screwdriver. I'm also going to use a furniture scratch marker, a paintbrush, and some Mod Podge. And then we'll be needing a sanding sponge and some flowers. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the hook that comes on this wall plaque and then it has a sawtooth hanger on the back. We're going to remove the sawtooth hanger and put all of that aside so we can use it later. And then taking a razor blade, we're going to gently lift up on the edge of the plaque and start removing the paper. It's got this clear plastic on top and I don't like the way it feels. It actually kind of prohibits the paper from sitting straight and slides around a little bit too much. I like to remove this shiny glossy paper that has that plastic finish. So as you see, I'm just taking a razor blade and lightly lifting up around the edges and then the majority of the paper just lifts off of the background. Once you have most of it off, you can just take your sanding sponge and just sand it smooth. So you have a nice smooth surface. You won't be seeing any of this once the project is finished. So it doesn't have to be real meticulous. Just get as much off as you can and then sand down the background. Now I printed this picture off the internet. I just googled French vintage cottage style and I got these really cute um, printouts that I can print. And like I said, I just Googled it and I looked up the images. Then I just trace the plaque and cut it out with my scissors. Now we're going to make two of these and I want them to look exactly the same. So I'm going to take that paper that I just cut out and line up the lines on the second printout so they match perfectly. So I get these as close as exactly identical as I can by lining up those papers and doing the cutout in the same spots. And we'll just trace around that cutout and then obviously cut that out with our scissors. And we have two pieces that are almost identical so that our wall hooks will look very similar. And this is just regular computer paper and a color printout from the internet. Okay, so now we'll take Mod Podge and we're going to completely cover the back of our um, plaque. You don't want to put too much Mod Podge on because you don't want the paper to wrinkle. However, if it does wrinkle, you can take a low temperature iron and some wax paper and just go over top of your Mod Podge paper to help smooth out any wrinkles if it wants to wrinkle on you. But if you put just enough to cover it without making it sopping wet, then it should be just fine because the computer paper is pretty thick. And then you just want to put that on and rub out any bubbles that may have formed. And then around the edges, you can go ahead and take your sanding sponge and just sand away from the surface towards the back to remove the excess paper and get a nice, clean, crisp edge. And we'll do this all the way around our plaque. And obviously we're making two, so we'll do the same steps to both. And here's what it looks like so far. So we've got both of them done. They look a little bit too bright to me. So I'm actually going to use some antiquing wax to help the edges to stand out a little bit. It's really up to you if you want to do this part or not. But I'm taking a wet wipe. I find baby wipes or glass wipes the best when I want to add just a little bit of antiquing wax to a project. They're just slightly damp, which really helps to spread the antiquing wax. And I dip my finger in just a little tiny bit of the wax with the wipe and then lightly brush on the edges, adding a little bit of detail. And it's really helping the edges of this project pop and give the look that I was really hoping for. Now you can see a comparison side by side, and this should help you decide if you want to do the antiquing on yours or leave uh, your project a little bit lighter in color. I did end up doing both of our plaques. 
I preferred the little bit darker look, but again, it's to each his own. And here's what it looks like with the ball hook on top. So as you can see, it helps that white hook kind of pop off that background a little bit by darkening it. So what I do then is take a pencil and I mark where the um, holes go for the screws. And then the boards are thin enough that you can just start to push down hard with your screwdriver and that will get the screw started into that MDF board and you should have no trouble getting your um, wall hooks attached. Then go ahead and put your hangers back on. We mostly took those off so that the plaques would lay flat while we worked on them. And now let's decorate this up a little bit. So I've got some greenery and I'm going to take some hot glue and just glue a little bit of greenery on the sides of the white wall hook. And then I have these very simple small white flowers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue that in the center and then take one pearl also from Dollar Tree and put that in the center of the flower to help dress it up a little bit. We'll add a few little leaves here around the sides. And we'll do the same to both. And then I felt like the edges still weren't popping as much as I liked. So I decided to take one of the furniture scratch markers from Dollar Tree and just lightly go over the edges with the marker. And then that helped those edges to stand out and really give a nice defined border. I really think darkening the edges made a huge difference here at the end. And here's what they look like finished. I absolutely love these. I hope you guys do too. So let's go over our second project. So now we're going to use some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, this home sign. We're going to need some wire, also some hot glue and scissors. And then we'll use this metal window and some flowers and greenery. So let's get crafty. We're going to start by painting our home sign with this light pink. It's called Ballerina Pink and this is the Apple Barrel brand. I did paint the back but it's really not necessary but you do want to paint the edges. Then the base I'm going to paint metallic gold. The window has a little bit of gold brushed on it so I thought that would help tie it all together. Now we're going to hand paint these tiny little rosebuds on the word home. So I'm really just making a spiral with some white spaces in between where I left the pink paint kind of shining through. And then once that dries, just go ahead and take a small paintbrush and take that same bright pink that we used first to paint the home and add just a little bit of highlight to that swirl. Add a few small leaves with some sage green. And you've got this adorable vintage rose pattern. Okay, so we'll let that dry. While that's drying, we'll take some greenery. We're just going to tie two pieces together using some floral wire and then wire that to the center portion of our window. We're just using um, some wire to tie that, it's floral wire. And now we'll take one small rosebud and we'll glue that to the center. Now for the burlap ribbon, we're going to glue that on the bottom edge. And the reason I'm adding the ribbon is so that the home sign, when we apply it to the window, it'll help it to stand out from the background. So we're just gluing this all the way around. And then we will add the home sign to our window. And again, we're going to take that really fine wire. We're just going to push it through the ribbon that we used and then wrap it around a few spots of the letters in just one spot. And then twist it on the back to help hold it together with the window and create the space that will allow it to stand up. And then you don't have to worry about any hot glue hiding it or trying to get it to hold to anything to stand up long term and the wire is so small it blends in you can't even see it and so I put like one piece on an E 
one or two pieces on the H and I think one more piece in the center around the letter M. So we're just putting the wire underneath and then over a portion of the letter one time and then tying it really tight and twisting that wire on the back. And then tuck your ends in so that there's no sharp edges standing out. And I'll continue to do that for a few of the letters. Just one spot for each one and has a nice firm hold. I really like the way this sits. It's not too top heavy because we only added the one flower so it will stand up really nice without falling over. And here's a close up of the word home and our flower on the window. And now for our next project. So the supplies we'll use for this one will be one of these glass faces. They have them in black as well. We need a doily. And then we're going to use this vinyl paper from Dollar Tree. Also some twine. We'll need scissors and hot glue. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the sticker off the bottom the best we can because it was sticking up past the sides a little bit. Then we're going to lay out our vinyl paper. And we're just going to roll this jar around to make sure that we have it long enough before we cut so that it will wrap all the way around the little bottle. Now it's a little too wide, so we're going to trim this down a little bit. And I ended up cutting this at the four inch mark. And then we'll cut it in half because it's just going to make putting this on the jar easier because of the curved edges, it will want to start to naturally go down at an angle. So if you put it on in two pieces, you can avoid that. We always start in the center and rub your bubbles out towards the edges and that helps to get rid of any wrinkles. So now we'll flip it over and do our second piece. And it just goes on so much easier if you split it in two. So now let's take one of those paper doilies and fold them in half. We're actually going to use two of these because um, we're going to need that um, ruffled edge there. And we're just going to cut the inside circle out. And now we'll start applying it to the jar. So we're going to take one half and put a dot of hot glue. And we're basically fan folding this all the way around. Now see how it starts to curve. So what you want to do is always make sure when you put that hot glue on that you're lining up that top edge so that you stay in a straight line and that will help give you this rippled um, wavy effect without going up at an angle. And just keep going around a little dot of hot glue for each piece. And just get it as close to that top edge of that flower paper as you can. So that's one whole piece and it ended up taking one and a half doilies to go all the way around. And then we'll want to smooth out that top edge. So we'll take some of this um, pearl adhesive wrap and we wrap that around the top edge above the ruffle. And we'll take another piece, wrap that around the mouth of the bottle. And then we'll take one small piece of the pearl wrap and add that to the bottom edge. And this helps give us a nice finished look on the top and the bottom. And then let's dress this up a little bit more. These pieces are all optional, of course. So we're going to tie some twine around the top of the jar. Add one of the flower die cut pieces from Dollar Tree. And then let's add a pearl to each one of the ends of the twine. And cut off the excess. And that is our bottle all finished. If you want, you can fill it with some flowers. Now for our fourth project today. Today we're going to be needing these succulent planters that hang on the wall. So they're like a half 
planter with a wall. Um, there's like a hole in the back for the wall hook and then we'll need some rub-on transfers and some greenery or succulents to fill these with. So let's get crafty. This is super simple. Anybody can do this craft. So they have the succulent planters, which I just love from Dollar Tree. They sell them in white and in black. And we're going to take these rub-on transfers that have things like different things about like fashion. It has um, a perfume bottle and some jewelry and things like that. And we're just going to lay this right on top of the glass and it almost suction cups to it. It sticks so well. And I literally could just rub this with my finger and get it to stick. And we're going to um, put these on all of our planters. It's okay if it goes up at an angle. That's kind of the look we're going for, just the words all over, Mod Podge together. And, um, you know, just the little designs everywhere filling in the spaces. And look how easy that went on. Really didn't even need a craft stick or anything like that to get it on. If you want, you can cut them up different ways because there's a ton of different sayings on this sheet. And if you want them to be together, that would be a good way to do it by cutting them up and helping fill in like the um, blank spaces and putting things more where you want them in a more purposeful fashion. So you could do it both ways. You could do it the first way I showed you where I just kind of put the whole thing on, rubbed over top of it and got the... Um, stickers to match or you can be more purposeful and place each piece that you want on your planter either way it works this looks really pretty as well and like a white vase those tiny uh, milk bottles that they sell sometimes um, those would look really cute with this on there as well and some little miniature roses um, I just love this design I think it's really pretty so now I have some more printouts from the internet. I actually printed these out on sticker paper to make it a little bit easier. That way I didn't have to mess with the Mod Podge all the time. So um, if you have sticker paper on hand, it's a great way to craft. We'll actually use these stickers for a few more projects today. Um, but again, if you don't have sticker paper, you can just use a printout from the internet and some Mod Podge, regular computer paper, and put these pictures on whichever you like it will work the same I just prefer the stickers I just think it's a little bit easier and quicker for me to get everything done here so as you can see for this one I added a sticker and I'm adding the rub-on transfers and a bunch of different designs and I also have some rose stickers I'm going to add those onto the planners just to help pull out a little bit of the color that we're using in all of these um, crafts that we're doing today. And here's what they look with our greenery in them or you can put flowers in them also and then together as a wall grouping. Super simple. Now for our fifth project, we are going to need some ribbon. We're also going to use these two pack of plastic pails, the wooden pencil cups. We'll need one of those and some glass votives. I have two different styles. We'll also need some magnets and two wood squares or rectangles, some adhesive pearl wrap. I'm going to use also some colored pencils, some hot glue and scissors, and some more of the floral vinyl paper, some flowers of your choice and you could use the printout stickers again if you like. So let's get crafty. So first thing we're going to do is just print out a large sticker. I'm going to do two of the same stickers so I can decorate both sides of this basket exactly the same. Once we have our sticker printed out, we'll just make sure we line this up as best we can. And this is a three by three inch sticker it works perfectly for the plastic pails that they have out right now then just take a wide piece of ribbon we're going to tie it in the center i cut these about three inches long and then we'll cut off the excess and wrap a little bit of that adhesive pearl wrap around the center just to decorate it a little bit more and we'll make two bows one for each side and hot glue these right to the top of our bucket and these pails are so cute. You can use them in the bathroom to hold um, washcloths, some um, disposable towels, hand towels would also be cute. I 
and here it is finished. I just rolled up some towels to stick inside. And then we'll do the glass votives. So these are just the regular glass votives Dollar Tree sells. Again, I made another sticker. I believe this one is four by three. And I just peel the back off and place it right on the glass. I fill it up with some little crystals from the Dollar Tree and a candle, the wood planter or pencil cup. I'm using the exact same sticker. And we're going to just place that right on the cup using the natural wood. And then we'll take this small votive and we'll wrap that vinyl paper that we've cut down to two inches wide. And we'll wrap that all the way around our votive right in the center. Then take some of that adhesive pearl wrap and wrap one strip all the way around the top. It didn't quite fit all the way around the top, but that's okay because we're going to add a bow right there. Just take smaller um, ribbon and create a very simple bow and glue that to the top right between that uh, pearl wrap. Make sure your ribbon is down in place and then take another strip of the pearl wrap and add that to the bottom row. I make this gorgeous little votive and we fill those up with the faux um, glass crystals and a candle. We put them on these hexagon mirrors from Walmart. And here is the wood planter or pencil cup with some flowers in it. Those small wood um, rectangles that I had from Dollar Tree. We're just going to take those stickers and make some refrigerator magnets or you can even use these on a dry erase board if you decorate your office in this theme. Um, as you can see I just put the sticker on the wood and now I have some scrapbook ribbon from Dollar Tree in gold. I cut a few stripes of that. I'm going to add it to the edges. Then taking a um, brown marker I'm going to cover color the edges to make it look like a framed border and then I'm going to very lightly go over top of the sticker to give it an antique look kind of like we did with the antiquing wax earlier just to make it have more of a little more of like an aged look to it and then I do color the edges of it as well with the pencil you can also use the um, scratch markers here if you like So this first one we did with the brown and gold border, glue the magnet on the back with some hot glue. And then this sticker here, I'm going to use a pink pencil to color in the edges. Draw out some pink from the center and then apply the sticker. Fix the edges with the pink pencil. And then make a very small twine bow, add that to the top. And I thought, you know what, it looked a little plain, so let's dress it up with a pink button right in the middle to help add that vintage look to it. We're just going to attach that with hot glue and then again, your button magnet on the back. And here's our magnets. They are one and a half by three inches. Now for our sixth project here. We have these small jewelry boxes from Dollar Tree, a sanding sponge. We'll need some Mod Podge. Also some tissue paper. Some printable stickers or paper. The adhesive Pearl Wrap. And what we're going to do first is remove all of the hardware from our jewelry box. Make sure you keep them where you won't lose them as we need to put the whole thing back together when we're finished. The first thing we'll do is cover this whole thing with Mod Podge and then add this really pretty sage green colored tissue paper and this will help color the whole thing without having to worry about paint. You can paint this as well. You don't have to do the tissue paper with Mod Podge. This is just really the look that I was going for because I think it helps to give it that vintage look. And I'm just covering the top and the bottom box and I layer it if I need to. Using a emery board I sand the edges and then I start applying the stickers to the top and bottom make a simple pink bow that's going to go on the lid. But first we're going to add some pearl wrap.
We'll add that to the top and around both sides and then we'll cut the lid apart. I just leave it together while I line it up. And then I keep taking stickers and I keep adding them to like the edges to create this old vintage looking trunk. And then we'll add this bow once we're done adding all of the stickers and pictures. Once we have all the stickers on, I took some more of those um, rub-on transfers that say the fashion and style wording, and we're going to put those on and layer those over top of the stickers. I put all of the hardware back on. It looks really pretty with the stickers underneath of the hardware. It makes it look like it's always been there, which I think really adds a nice added touch. So it looks like a fun old trunk that you would maybe travel with. I'm adding a few more of those rose um, stickers that I had on hand. This helps tie in all of our projects when you can use some of the same elements repeatedly in a whole series. We'll add our bow finally with some hot glue. And that's our little miniature trunk all finished. Super simple. And then we have another project. So for number seven, we are going to use this frame from Dollar Tree. We'll use a pack of doilies. We'll just need one, a rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree, some scissors. We'll need, again, paper or stickers from Dollar Tree that you've printed. So let's get crafty. So we're really just making kind of like a collage here. So this has a mirror in it. I took the mirror out and just flipped it over. That's what we're going to use to apply all of these pictures too. I'm using some decorative edge scissors from Dollar Tree to cut the edges and I just keep cutting out the printed pictures that I made and adding Mod Podge to them, layering them in different designs and angles. Um, I, like some of them I cut into rectangles. I have a few triangles, squares, and I just keep layering them over and over again, not worrying about the edges. And then once I'm done, I flip the whole thing over and trim it with a razor blade. And then I Mod Podge over the whole entire thing, making this really fun collage. I'm going to take a doily and cut it in four and put one of the pieces into the corner. Some gold scrapbooking sticker um, ribbon from Dollar Tree. We're going to add that to the top and then add a few pieces of the scrapbooking paper onto the edges. Then I'll take the Dollar Tree transfer. We'll put that over the doily and add our bumblebee with the wreath. Then we'll take a piece of ribbon and create a bow. And I'm going to use the green and white gingham for the bow. It matches really pretty with the pink in the background and the tan. So after you're done making a very simple small bow, you can go ahead and add that to the center on top of the scrapbooking ribbon sticker. We're just going to glue that right to the backing and then pop this whole thing back into the frame. Then we're taking one of these small glass jars from Dollar Tree I ended up adding this after the fact, so I didn't have it in the supply list. I apologize. This, of course, is optional. So I'm taking one of these small glass jars, adding some of that adhesive pearl wrap to the top, and then taking a few more of those rub-on transfers with the bees, and I'm just adding those to the jar. And then once that's done, we'll glue this jar to the corner of our frame.
and we'll glue that to the corner and then just take some small roses cut them down and I'm going to glue them together just to make them a little bit smaller and then we'll put those down into the small uh, bottle that looks like a vase and so these are all of our projects that we've made today with the similar theme I had so much fun making these I just love how they turned out I've always been in love with this look I hope you guys enjoy all the projects that we've made today um, some of them are just super simple and you know you should have most of these items on hand a few items you'll need from Dollar Tree and sometimes um, you know you'll have to pick up an item from like Walmart or something like that if you need sticker paper to help or you can just print these out like I said right on some computer paper you don't have to have the sticker paper to create this project these were a lot of fun I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make these with us thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share and here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy have a great night everyone